Good evening, everybody, and thank you so much for joining us right now from Studio A, and we welcome you to our special coverage of Primary Night 2022 right here on WFSB Plus and on the Channel 3 app. Again, thanks for joining us. I'm Mark Sinney. Yeah, it's that time of the year. It's here come already. Hi, everyone. I'm Erin Connolly. The polls just closed across Connecticut one minute ago, in fact, and now the waiting game begins. And by the end of the night, we are hoping to know who will take on Richard Blumenthal in the race for U.S. Senate. A lot of new developments expected to come out tonight. Yes. Of course, we'll uh, also know the matchup for the Secretary of the State race in November and which Democrat will take on Republican Harry uh, Aurora for State Treasurer. We are also monitoring the Republican House race in the 4th District. That is down in Fairfield County with party-endorsed candidate Jamie Stevenson taking on Dr. Michael Goldstein. And of course, we have some other experts with with us joining us yes, now we do. tonight the real in the studio, experts. <laughs> digging into all of this. Uh, two of the state's premier political reporters, Channel 3's chief political reporter Susan Raff is joining us, of course, and Dan Har, a special columnist, uh, a special expert who joins us regularly, I should say, yes. and a regular columnist, associate <laughs> editor at Hearst Connecticut Media. And Hearst and WFSB are partnering to provide you with the very best, most comprehensive, in-depth coverage of campaign 22. So like we said, welcome to both of you. Thank you. The polls Thank have you. just closed. So we can tell the truth? <laughs> yeah, right? We we always tell the truth, Dan. <laughs> oh, what well, do you think right. are yes. going to be the big uh, headlines from tonight? I think Themis is going to pull it out. Uh, I think the Trump endorsement for Leora Levy from Greenwich was a help in the primary. It would hurt her if she does win the primary. It's going to hurt her, of course, in the general election. But that was, I wouldn't say a desperate measure, but it was a, a strong measure and say, I want to really win this primary. And it's going to help her, but not enough. That's my prediction, but who knows? Uh, it's been not a terribly well-run campaign for either. I don't know what you... Uh... No, I, I think I share that. I think that uh, Themis, uh, if she wins, uh, it will be tight. I think that the Trump endorsement uh, definitely put some oxygen into her campaign. And I would have to agree, I'm not sure that Themis really <coughs> ran the best campaign. I mean, she had some personal issues. I mean, her mother passed away during her campaign, so right. I know that was an issue. In July. Yeah, in July. Yeah. And I think that... Um, I think it's been tough for her. I don't think maybe she was uh, strong enough in getting her message out, but we will see tonight. Name recognition, though, people seem to know Themis more, right? Not as much as you would think. We do because we cover this yeah. stuff, and she mm -hmm. was in the legislature for 22 years, six years as majority, minority leader. Uh, but, you know, there's the capital effect. I call it the Jim Amon effect, right? He was Speaker of the House, and he was not a strong uh, statewide known figure, and he ran for governor after being Speaker for four years and really wasn't known at all. Themis a little bit better known than some people because of her... Uh, you know, activism in the valley and so forth, but not really nearly enough to run a statewide campaign. Right. I call it the under the gold dome effect. Yes, yes, I think yes. people who are in the legislature, they get a lot of attention from reporters, and but they think they're, uh, they're very visible and that people know them and their household name. Not so. A lot of people yeah. don't know them. Like it's very inside baseball. Yes, it can be. And that's, I think, what will help Themis Claritas in this primary. If she could get out uh, all the lawmakers in the Capitol. And one of the things that I found very interesting was that even conservatives like uh, Fishbein and Sampson, uh, I think they will support her uh, and have because of the fact that they know her. She's a legislator. They don't know Leora Levy. And so with Themis, you kind of know what you, you're getting into. And speaking of Themis Claritas, she is the endorsed candidate for the Republican Party. We want to go out now to Channel 3's Dylan Fearon. He is live at the Middletown headquarters of Themis Claritas. We see a lot of people behind you there and some balloons. Maybe too early for that, though, Dylan. Yeah, good evening, guys. We've been here on Main Street, Middletown, for about an hour. So far, no sign of Themis Claritas just yet. We are told she should be arriving in the next few minutes, so we will see. But right now, few people here so far. It's a couple of dozen aside from the press. Right now, let's give you a look. Right now, a few people here. we got some pizza boxes, some soda, some people just uh, coming in the last few minutes. It's gotten a little louder here in the last 15, 20 minutes. We are told that Ms. Clarity should be coming, should be arriving in the next few minutes. But the supporters that are here are very confident. They said today went very well. We do know that uh, talking to the Claritas campaign, that turnover seemed to be fairly low, but they are confident that Themis will be pulling it out. And the campaign, the pitch that they've been running on is the fact that Claritas is the only one out of the three candidates that has 
won elections in the past. She was in the House, as Dan had mentioned, for more than 20 years, House Minority Leader for roughly six years. So they're confident, and as a pro-choice Republican, they feel that she, as more of a moderate, has a much better chance tonight than the other two candidates, Leora Levy and Peter Lamage, who are both more conservative. But on the other hand, as Dan mentioned, Leora Levy has that endorsement from former President Trump. That came last Thursday, a few days ago. Dan and I talked. He mentioned that it might be a little too late, but at the moment, it was neck and neck between Leora Levy and Themis Clarida. So we, we will have to see. We do know Susan spoke to Themis earlier today. Here's what she had to say. I feel great. You know, like a campaign is about a bunch of different emotions, exciting and frustrating and nervous. And um, we've had great responses from people all over the state. We all agree on one thing as Republicans. We want to beat Dick Wolenthal. And the only person in the primary today is me. So we will have to see again. We've been here for about an hour. We are told Themis Clarida should be here any minute. And as the results in the polls start coming in, we will see how things play out. Again, Leora Levy getting that endorsement from former President Trump. How much did that help her? How much was the Trump factor in Connecticut among Republicans and coming pretty late? The fact that it came on Thursday, how will that impact things? Also, the FBI raid in Florida yesterday, did that energize Trump supporters here in Connecticut to come out and vote today? But everyone I've talked to said turnout was fairly low. We spoke to the Secretary of State earlier about a couple of hours ago. He said things were looking pretty low as well. I had one supporter tell me the turnout was miserable. So we will have to wait and see. We do know uh, we tend to see maybe 20, 25 percent on a good year. Uh, we will have to see, but it seems like it might be lower than that, guys. We'll send it back to you. A lot of good points there, Dylan. We'll be checking back in with you as that excitement there continues to build at the mm. Themis Claritas headquarters. I was going to say all eyes on that location mm -hmm. tonight. Julia Bergman is the Connecticut politics reporter for Hearst Connecticut Media. She is at the Hyatt Regency in Old Greenwich right now with the uh, Leora Levy for U.S. Senate campaign. As we were just talking about moments ago, Julia, she got the endorsement of uh, the former president over the weekend. How are things there right now? Hi, yeah, we have about uh, 50 or so people gathered in the ballroom here. Leora has yet to arrive, but um, certainly a crowd is starting to gather. Um, supporters here are very excited and obviously hoping that um, Republican voters today chose the conservative uh, candidate in the race. Um, you know, they see Themis as a political insider, obviously her time in the state legislature. Uh, so they say they're ready for somebody new and who is really more aligned with Trump and uh, conservative values. Uh, Leora has, uh, you know, she had a telephone rally last night with her supporters that President Trump joined just hours after the FBI search of Mar-a-Lago. Um, no mention by either of them of the search, um, but, you know, highlighting Leora as a conservative in this race, um, you know, the, the right candidate, um, the only candidate that's going to be able to beat Dick Blumenthal. Um, she hasn't had much time to obviously promote that endorsement uh, of the former president, but she's spent much of today, uh, or her campaign has spent much of today, putting out blasts on social media and text messages, uh, you know, alerting supporters, alerting Republican voters that, uh, of the endorsement. Julia, I'm curious about one thing. So you've obviously covered this race. You've covered a lot of this for a long time. Uh, Leora Levy, as these folks know, did not participate in the recent CT22 interview that we had. What has the relationship been like? Like, do you, how do you think her campaign has gone? Um, you know, the campaign has certainly heated up in the last couple of weeks. She's certainly attacked uh, Peter Lamage, and we know that she's made um, threats to him to get him out of the race um, and uh, certainly has ramped up her attacks against Themis. So, um, you know, she's certainly on the attack here as she tries to uh, uh, be the one who uh, faces Blumenthal in November. All right, Julia Bergman with Hearst Connecticut Media. Thank you very much. And I think what we've been talking about a lot is Leora Levy. If you watch Channel 3, you've seen there are a lot of ads from her attacking Themis, attacking Peter Lumage. And to your point about insiders and outsiders, she has tried to say multiple times that she's an outsider. She's an outsider. But now she's kind of an insider with Trump, and she has some affiliations with the Republican Party well in advance of this election. Show me a person who is a <laughs> veteran member of the Republican National Committee, and she was credited with Trump, by Trump last night for changing it from committee man to committee woman, good for her on that, mm -hmm. uh, and who was not only on the committee but a member of the Finance Committee. 
and politics is about money, so you can say that the Finance Committee is the inner sanctum. A person who was responsible for raising millions of dollars for Republicans over the years, which is a big part of her successful ability to get this far, and a person who was nominated to be ambassador to Chile uh, during the Trump administration. I'll show you an insider. <laughs> Very much the insider, I think, in yes. Washington, maybe yes. the outsider in Hartford politics. And I think what's important to note also is that going forward, you know, all of them want to beat Blumenthal. That's, you know, that's the goal, right? Um, but they need unaffiliated voters in Connecticut in order to do that. So Themis Claritus really believes that she's the one to do that. She's won, uh, what, 11 different elections, and she has gotten unaffiliated voters. So she feels and has certainly touted that, that she's the one uh, to go forward because she's the one who can beat Blumenthal. That's the conventional wisdom. The question is, for us who are sitting in the conventional wisdom chairs here, <laughs> we got the magic conventional wisdom. Right? Is it? Is it? The, is it? Are we overlooking an enthusiasm uh, factor that a a true Trumpist, far right person can do to excite the base so much so that if. Blumenthal stumbles, and only if he stumbles, then that Republican can win in a way that Themis would need to do more than she's done so far. She needs to excite people, not just the base, but independents, in a way more than she's done. I would give her uh, slack, A, because of the difficulty of the summer, and B, because she had some internal polling early July that showed she was well ahead. She had polls that were public, the Emerson poll, that showed that she was ahead, and she kind of figured, I'll do the Biden thing and maybe not be quite so out there. She worked really hard in the towns and got a lot of endorsements from people in the towns. That, she feels, was going to do the trick. But a poll's a poll's a poll, right? So a lot of people count on those polls, they look at the results, uh, but anything can happen, right? So things start out and change. So I think it's hard for many campaigns to actually give credence to that or think, well, I'm ahead in the polls, so I'm going to do well. I was, yeah, I, I was talking to a, a, a state official today who's a Democrat, and he's telling me the story. His brother-in-law or, or cousin or somebody out east in one of the eastern Connecticut towns is a Republican. They get along, okay? So he, he's <laughs> Just talking not on to, Thanksgiving. That's right. Yeah. Oh, exactly. So he's talking to his brother-in-law, whoever it was, and said, you know, if you primary today, you're going to vote? And he goes, oh, yes, absolutely. My, my selectman told me to vote for... A famous Clar Clarissa. Oh, no. So That's that that speaks yeah. to both the fact that Themis is counting on that network of local officials to disseminate her in her vote, and the fact that people don't know who she is. And the people going to the polls today are those who are energized already. Yes. Right? I mean, That's to vote true. in a primary when most mm -hmm. people are on vacation, I mean, I've met a lot of people who didn't even know there was a primary today. So. Mm -hmm. The thing that I will mention is that there's been a lot of talk, obviously, recently about the reversal of Roe v. Wade. And I'm wondering how that factors into this election, given the fact that Leora Levy is clearly pro-life. Peter Lumage has said over and over again he's the only conservative who hasn't flip-flopped. And with Themis, you're dealing with a moderate. So does that help her, given the backlash to the Supreme Court's decision on Roe v. Wade? Yeah, I'm not sure. I think it does and it doesn't. I think it depends what voters are looking for. I think in Connecticut, she has more traction being a moderate. If she were running in another state, I think it would be a different situation. But I think Connecticut voters, even Republicans, uh, can be pro-choice. Uh, many supported uh, Republican legislators, supported <coughs> gun legislation after Sandy Hook. So I think in Connecticut, uh, you can uh, win over people that way. I do. It's interesting you're talking about uh, a turnout in with the primary. Um, we are getting some numbers coming in right now. You can see them on the bottom of the screen. Very early, but I just saw some moments ago from the Secretary of the State race. Uh, also earlier today, uh, the Secretary of the State had a, a, a bit of a... Um, address the media, I yes. should say, um, about, uh, you know, voter turnout today so we can listen in. There's been a, you know, a couple minor issues, but nothing that seems to have, certainly nothing has been anything of any sort of disruption or things that uh, are unexpected. Um, it obviously, it was a hot day today, and um, there's been some reports of some of the tabular machines um, uh, sticking a little bit in the heat. But we've got procedures for things like that. The ballots get put into um, an auxiliary bin, uh, secured, and then they can be counted at another time when it's either cooler or by um, backup tabulators. So nothing that is any concern to us um, uh, and certainly has not deprived anyone or delayed anyone from, from uh, casting a ballot or being part of the election. 
Um, so that, that uh, gives me a, um, a, a lot of hope. Um, I just would finish up by saying that I have a, I want to express an enormous amount of gratitude to the, all the local officials, registrars, town clerks, and the host of volunteers who um, are, are really the key to making these things happen um, in a, in a uh, lawful and um, appropriate way. And uh, we owe them a lot of our, all our thanks. I just want to say one thing. Obviously, he was appointed in that position, correct, by the governor after Denise Merrill resigned. I mean, it's worth noting, though, that's quite a void, though, in political, in politics here in Connecticut, right? It Denise is, Merrill and what she's done over the past well, decade. She's been in office, what, 11 years. Yeah. So that position, you know, she's held it and well liked and pushed for early voting. Uh, I think, fortunately, you know, the special election came up close to the primary, so it wasn't a, a long period of time. The staff was there. It's the same staff that is there, and the staff does a lot of the uh, work, of course. <laughs> so uh, I think for him, it, it, he was um, in a way fortunate and in a way unfortunate that it was sort of a quiet day. And I asked him about that, whether it was a sort of a dress rehearsal for the general election, which we presume won't be quite as quiet. And he said, sure, absolutely. He thought that 30 percent was a threshold. And I kind of made a little noise in the background in the, on the tape. 20 percent. I, uh, <laughs> I, said, I, I said, I think you'd be lucky to get 20. And in, yeah. in the town halls where I was today, which were three, I mean, in the voting locations, uh, it, it was more of a trickle and obviously I was in uh, New Britain rush. and uh, and Fairfield and very very light voter turnout and that's putting it you know yeah mildly mildly and speaking of the secretary of the state this is a more important position than ever before we're talking about what has happened after the pandemic the talk about more access to voting and early voting what do you think that does in terms of people's interest in this race and the importance of that position in our state government i don't think the voters understand that today I think in the general election there will be significant difference between uh, either Kerry Wood and or Dominic Rapini and the Democrat, whoever it is, uh, especially in, in opening up the vote. The Republicans would like to see uh, ID, mandatory showing of your ID. The Democrats don't want to see that. The Republicans want to go much slower on mail-in voting, on absentee ballots. That may be a, a, a referendum that may become moot, you know, in the next cycle. but they're going to want to slow down a little bit. And so that's going to be a bigger difference in the general, not so much in the primary. Well, the endorsed candidate for Secretary of the State is Stephanie Thomas. Channel 3's Eliza Krasinski is at Trinity Bar in New Haven right now, uh, where I would imagine there are a lot of anxious people waiting for some results tonight. Hi there, Eliza. Hi, guys. Um, yeah, we are here, and, you know, we're waiting for those numbers to come in for those three major races, the Republican and Democratic races, for the Secretary of the State and the Democratic race for Treasurer. Now, we are waiting patiently on Stephanie Thomas, who is the endorsed candidate for the Secretary of State race, and uh, Eric uh, Russell, who is also the, um, he is the endorsed candidate for the Treasurer. Now, both are expected to be here a little later once those numbers come in. We're here again at Trinity Bar in New Haven. And actually, in the meantime, I am joined by Democratic Chair Nancy DiNardo. Now, Nancy, talk to me about tonight and this race and, you know, everything that's gone into it so far. Well, you know, it's in August, it's a difficult time to have a primary anyway. And the fact that it's the Secretary of State and Treasurer, not as exciting as it might have been if it was a governor or lieutenant governor or Congress or U.S. Senator, uh, but, and a lot of people are away, so, um, and it's so hot that the voter turnout has been, I think, exceptionally low at this point, but it has generated some excitement, and I think it will continue to generate excitement so that after Labor Day, when the races actually end up starting, that people will already be engaged. And uh, it, like I said, it is a low turnout. Uh, it's probably the lowest turnout we'll ever see. But. So, um, you know, what are you looking forward to most as these ballots are counted right now for both or all three of the races, the Republican, Democrat, Secretary of the State, and then the Treasurer's race? What are you kind of hoping comes out of all of this? Well, obviously at the convention, uh, the Eric Russell was the endorsed candidate for Treasurer, and uh, Stephanie Thomas, Representative Thomas, was the endorsed candidate for Secretary of the State. 
So since it was our convention, I do support those people. But any of the candidates that win are very well qualified and would do a great job. And we will come together um, because everybody recognizes how important that is once the race is over that we all get behind our candidates to win. Yeah, and talk to me about the future. You know, November is coming up quick. Yes, it is. It is. So um, we will be having a unity rally this Saturday up in Hartford at the Capitol at 11 o'clock where all of the candidates will be there and all of our constitutional officers will be there to celebrate the fact that we are all together. That's great. Well, thank you so much for chatting with me. Yeah, so we are still here at Trinity Bar waiting for Stephanie and Eric to get here uh, once all of those numbers come in, win or lose. So we will keep you updated right here on the Channel 3 app. For now, live in New Haven tonight, Eliza Krasinski, Channel 3 Eyewitness News. All right, Eliza, thank you. Do you guys think it would be, uh, would it be a big upset if Stephanie didn't win tonight? Not terribly. Yeah. I think she's going to win yeah. because Maritza Bond was late in getting her money. She didn't get her money until the very last possible day, Friday, uh, October. That's my birthday. Friday. <laughs> Friday happy Friday, we're not giving Friday, you happy any early money. Birthday. There you go. Friday, fr <laughs> Friday, July 22nd, and that's really not much time. She wasn't able to get on the air with ads until the following week, which is really what uh, we can have to go. She had an ad though that was uh, that attacked. Stephanie, quite. I, we were. I think we noticed it. Maritza you know, Bond, yes. yeah, Maritza Bond did. We noticed it in the studio. It was. Uh, it definitely stood out from some of the other ads. Yes, the uh, she missed two votes. One was uh, the CBAC approval, and the other was uh, remind me. It was another vote she missed on uh, voting. Yes, okay. it was one of the voting reform votes. Um, I believe to get on the ballot for the constitutional amendment. Okay. Was, it, don't hold me to that, but it was the CBAC contract vote okay. that the union members believe that a combination of her not really, this is Stephanie Thomas now, not really engaging with labor during the session. They didn't like that as a fresh freshman. Uh, yep. And, and a significant vote, but keep in mind, uh, Stephanie Thomas, uh, the endorsed candidate. Mm -hmm. She's had a lot of uh, power behind her by the Democratic Party. She's had press conferences where the former Secretary of the State, Denise Merrill, has been there. So yeah, I, I think she'll pull it off. But Maritza Bond uh, has, you know, in her own right, uh, you know, she's the first Latina health director in the state of Connecticut, uh, a female. Uh, you know, she's definitely an energetic person, but you're right. She came in very late. Uh, right. to this race and her right. ad came out late. I believe she would be the first uh, Hispanic endorsed or nominated candidate. Not to, to, to Secretary of the State, but right now she's in the health director uh, in New Haven. Right, 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 right. But I believe she would be the first nominated Hispanic to any constitutional office in Connecticut. Right. There may have been a Republican. I don't believe there's been a Democrat. Um, and that's a big deal, a part of her campaign. Really what the difference is in that race comes down to not policy at all, but style. Uh, I was just going to ask yeah. you that because yeah. if you're a Democrat going to vote today for either Thomas or Bond, you're saying to yourself they both want early access to voting, they both want enhanced voting rights. Yes. What's the difference? Who Their do I vote for? Their campaigns are very, very similar. And they're both strong on business services, at least rhetorically, that they have some experience uh, working with businesses. Maritza in her job as the uh, uh, health director of both Bridgeport and New Haven during a pandemic. That's very much out, outreach to business. And uh, Stephanie Thomas, Representative Thomas, is a business consultant. One of the things that I found interesting is that Republican Dominic Rapini, who wants a government ID, felt that Connecticut should move its primary, right? Because having an August primary, and Connecticut used to have a September primary, which is really close to the election, but August people are on vacation. That can be done, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, although other states do have summer primaries. We're witnessing that for the midterm elections. <laughs> but they could, could they not? I mean, if couldn't the parties uh, present that with to the legislature and change it? A lot would have to change. For example, today I was in Wethersfield and there was a gentleman out there whom I knew. I used to work with him at The Current. And he was gathering signatures for a candidate to appear as an independent or unaffiliated on the ballot. Come to find out it's due tomorrow. Those ballot signatures for the November ballot are due tomorrow. So the whole timetable is squeezed and would have to be squeezed even further. What's wrong with having a primary in June? No, I agree. I think spring would be better. You yeah. give candidates, although some people say, well, you know, you're going to lose the momentum because it's close to the election. But it would also give candidates more time to get their message out. You know, we also don't have anything on the ballot 
you know, like obviously they had a huge turnout in Kansas last week because uh, they had something quite controversial on the ballot, mm -hmm. and they said that really brought people out to like presidential year numbers. I mean, mm -hmm. we're not seeing anything like that. And even. a surprise, the result was the, the well, it was uh, very yeah. surprising. Yes, yeah. yes, retaining the. Uh, uh, Re right reproductive for a woman choice. to choose. Right, that's a, that was a big surprise. I do want to get quickly back to the stylistic yeah. differences. Maritza yeah. Bond is a whirlwind. You cannot keep up with this woman, right? She's about four feet eleven, and she is talking a mile a minute, literally about three hundred words a minute. She's got a lot of ideas. She's going. She's going. Some people really like that. And she's great with people. I went. Yes. I watched her go door knocking. People like her. She's very personable. And she is four feet eleven. She's one of the few people that I look down on. Stephanie Thomas <laughs> uh, is. Uh, never mind the height. I don't. I don't know that her height it stands out. She's not short, but much quieter, much less likely to to just keep running. Much more. I think they're both. I, I would not say that someone talks a mile a minute is not a good listener. But Stephanie Thomas is really listening, and she's talking a lot less, and she's thinking, and you can see that that. that the wheels are turning. That's yeah. a, so that's a, a real stylistic difference. And when I covered the convention, there were delegates who voted for Stephanie Thomas because they thought that she was a calming influence. What about Dominic Rapini versus Terry Wood? There were two Republican candidates. Uh, is there any difference in the message that they're going out, Republicans voting today? Was there a stylistic difference or was there actually a platform difference? <laughs> I think that, because I had the opportunity to sit down with both of them, I think Dominic definitely would like the government ID, and he's somebody, instead of um, expanding voting, would like to work on uh, the system that's now in place. And Terry Wood uh, is, is pretty much the same. I think that she uh, supports some of that uh, as well. I mean, she has a lot of experience in the state legislature as well. But I think they both are more of a conservative approach than expanding uh, early voting uh, and doing it that way, or more absentee ballots. Well, we do want to head out right now because we have uh, someone else joining us this afternoon. Brianna Gerchulio, uh, the government and politics reporter with the Stanford Advocate, is in Darien right now at the Goose American Bistro and Bar. This is where 4th <laughs> District U.S. House candidate Jamie Stevenson, a Republican, and Republican Secretary of the State candidate Terry Wood will be appearing tonight. Thank you very much for being here. I guess at this point right now, you're probably not seeing much activity, are you? That's right. Uh, things are, are uh, well, they're starting to get a little louder now. Um, but when I was last in the room, neither candidate had arrived yet. Uh, but since I stepped away, one of them um, could have arrived. Uh, but yes, um, as you said, uh, Terry Wood, uh, state rep, is, is uh, here tonight along with Jamie Stevenson. Um, Wood is running, obviously, for Secretary of State, um, challenging Dominic Perpini, uh, who was the party-endorsed candidate, and James Stevenson was, is the party-endorsed candidate for uh, the 4th Congressional District. She's hoping to unseat Jim Himes, uh, but Greenwich doctor and lawyer uh, Michael Goldstein um, thinks that he has the better shot and uh, forced the primary by gathering signatures. So we'll see how things turn out tonight. All right, Brianna, thank you so much for being with us. We appreciate it. I just, just want to get back to the point about Rapini and, and Wood. I think I may have said Kerry Wood. There is a representative Kerry yes. Wood and a representative Terry Wood. And one is, <laughs> a, moderate, you to make that one is a moderate Democrat and the yes. other is a moderate Republican. So, uh, But I want when you ask about the differences between Rapini and Wood, mm -hmm. um, in the era of Trump, I think we have to point out that there is a scale for ideology where Rapini is pretty far to the right, uh, not as far as some of the people in the Midwest, but for Connecticut, he's pretty far to the right, you know, sort of Trumpian right. But there's also a scale of flamethrower versus what do you call someone who's well behaved, right? N not Donald Trump. <laughs> right? N frankly, not Leora Levy, yeah. who takes shot at, shots at someone at the wrong times and that kind of thing. Right? So you have the flamethrower. I think Dominic Rapini is significantly less a flamethrower. With him, of I'm sure. Course. I'm sure they're working on Or a bad sign. <laughs> uh, I don't, does anybody have legit... Any it's ago and was chatting with some people in the room also. Results, I'm looking at some numbers So here. I was going to say, the results are starting to come in on the bottom of the screen. I did see at one point uh, Leora Levy was up by quite a bit. Obviously, there is not uh, all of the results 
in at this point, so it is hard to say. We do hear, though, that we have Dylan Farron's mic. We're going to go back out to Themis Claritas' headquarters where Dylan has an update for us. Dylan, we're looking forward to hearing that voice of yours. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. Yes, we just saw Themis Claritas walk in about 30 seconds a minute ago. She hugged some supporters, hugged some family members. She walked into a private room. Before she did that, though, I asked her, any thoughts on today, any thoughts on the low turnout? She said, we just have to wait and see. And she was escorted into a private room with some of her family members and some friends, some supporters. But as you can see right now, let's show you a look at what's going on here at the party in Middletown. Some more people have shown up in the last 20, 30 minutes, enjoying some pizza, enjoying some salad, some chips. Uh, a lot of press here. I'd say about, at this point, 20 to 30 people uh, outside of the press have now uh, shown up to the watch party tonight. And Dan, Dan and Susan have been great tonight, um, giving us a look into what this race is all about. It's been contentious, a lot of attacks in the last couple of weeks. We do know Themis Claritas has been endorsed by the state Republican Party, but Leora Levy gets the endorsement from former President Trump. So should be close. I talked to Dan last week. He said it looks like it might be neck and neck. We'll have to wait and see as the results come in. We do know Susan spoke to Themis Claritas earlier today. Here's what some of what she had to say. I'm the only one that's won an election. I've won 11 elections in Democrat-leaning districts. We must want, win unaffiliated voters to win a statewide election in Connecticut as a Republican. And I'm the only one that has, has been elected by unaffiliated voters throughout the state and worked corner to corner as leader. And that's a big part of Themis Claritas' campaign in the last few months. She's the only one that's won elections. She's been in the state house. She was in the state house for more than 20 years, six years as the house minority leader, as whereas Leora Levy and Peter Lamage, not a ton of political experience or any. We do know Leora Levy as a Greenwich businesswoman does have the Trump endorsement. That came I said last week that it was. How much was that a factor today? How much was the FBI raid in Mar-a-Lago uh, a factor yesterday? Were Trump supporters energized today? So far, we've talked to people about the low turnout. It seems like it wasn't. How big was the Trump factor? Might not have been uh, as big as we thought. Dan and I talked and said that it was huge for her, for Leora Levy in the primary. Not as much if she were to win tonight and be in the general election. All three candidates do have the one, this one thing in common. They are 2011. So we'll, we will have to wait and see. The results are starting to come in, and we'll send it back to Aaron, Mark, Dan, and Susan. Guys, back to you. All right, Dylan, thank you very much. We're Obviously, all here, Dylan. Yeah, we're all here. <laughs> and we'll check back in with you. Let us know as soon as anything big goes on. Yes. Let us know. Some of the numbers, we'll of course, coming in. in. And uh, Leora Levy with uh, a lead right now. Again, these numbers are very early. Mm -hmm. uh, Eric Russell with a strong lead as well. Um, and Stephanie Thomas with a strong lead as well from some of these early numbers just coming in right now. But we also have a live camera at Leora Levy's campaign. You can see right here. This is in uh, Greenwich, I believe. Um, where they're getting ready to potentially hear from her. She has quite a few people there. Yeah, right? Yeah, she really does. She is not in attendance yet, we are told, but we will let you know when she arrives to her headquarters for tonight. You can see a lot of people looking at their phones anxiously, awaiting the results. Where does Peter Lumage stand in all of this? Because we've focused a lot on Themis Claritas and we focused a lot on Leora Levy. Peter Lumage is kind of that third candidate. He's from Cuba. He's very conservative. He said he's the only one who hasn't flip-flopped. Does he have a shot tonight? Right. He's actually from Albania, but he Albania, is from, I'm right, sorry. But he's, not, he's from a communist country, and that's been his big mantra, and Dan and I spoke about that on CT22. It's part of his shtick, if you will, and what he talks about. Uh, I think that uh, Leora takes votes away from him. One thing that well, I... He takes votes away from her. Oh, he takes votes away from her, but <laughs> vice Somebody's versa. taking yeah. votes away from somebody. I think they're both <laughs> very aligned. One thing, though, that I have noticed, because uh, Peter Lamarge has run before, is people really like him. Uh, even if you may not agree with his politics, he's a decent human being and is uh, a gentleman. But they are closely aligned as far as, you know, being uh, anti-abortion. Uh, they are pro-Second Amendment. But one thing is interesting, I think that... Uh, Peter Lamage has been pretty consistent uh, throughout his career on those. Leora Levy, not so much. 2012, uh, you know, in 2019, she was pro-choice. She was anti-Trump. I believe in a woman's right to, to choose. choose. And now that's gone out the window. Yes, that was when Romney was the, mm -hmm. was the nominee. Right. And she was on the... Uh, uh, and now, you know, he's the best thing since sliced bread. So. Well, it isn't so much that she that she flipped. It was when and how she changed. And, and she claims that it was the, this sort of big revelation. But it occurs per part of the wing of the Republican Party to Mitt Romney, not the successor, but the parallel, uh, 
dies, it doesn't die, thankfully, going nowhere. Mm -hmm. And that's when Donald Trump becomes ascendant. And suddenly, Leora Levy has this, this, this epiphany. Right? And so that's when we in the, pol in the political analysis business question epiphanies, because they coincide with somebody coming to power. Do you think uh, Dick Blumenthal would prefer to run against Leora Levy, though, because of the whole Trump factor? That's a good question. This is the problem they faced in Michigan, where the Democrats backed the far extreme, and they may, as, as is being said, they may get what they want if they face a, an extremist if you're an incumbent. But it's dangerous because an extremist can incite and excite the base. And if you stumble, you may, as we see in some of these early numbers, the base is the base. Mm -hmm. uh, 52 percent for Leora Levy and 37 or 8 for Themis Claritas. That represents about 10,000 votes out of what we can expect to be between 90 and 110. Of the expected vote. I think that number is a little low. I think it's about 10%, but whatever it is, yeah. just so that you, when you see the scroll, 11 and 10 or 11% of the total that's expected. And so when it says like 81% there for John, it, that that's not the amount of vote in. That's his lead right now in the. Correct. Correct. And so when you see somebody who's in a, in a race like Themis Claritas, you have reason to believe that the, the bigger towns are going to go more for her, and the smaller towns that report early may be these numbers that we're seeing for Leora Levy, where you have the conservative Trump bastion towns out east and that kind of thing. Do you think there's a split? Do you think that Leora Levy will do better in Grant in the northern part of the state? No, I don't think she'll do well in Fairfield County. She may do well in Greenwich, Greenwich. because people know her, but right. you know, th there's two sides of knowing, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so she may do poorly because people know her. Mm -hmm. You know, she she did fail to show up here for our forum precisely because she knows that when she speaks, people don't necessarily like what they hear. And one of the things that you had mentioned uh, about, you know, whether Leora does well or, or not, um, I think that there's, there's a real distinction here, and I think people have to, to, to see when they go to the polls today and when they went and how they feel about that. And speaking of Leora Levy, we want to head back out to her headquarters for tonight. She is in Old Greenwich, which is where we find Julia Bergman <coughs> from Hearst Connecticut Media. Julia, has Leora arrived? What's the update there? Hi, yeah, we're still waiting for Leora to arrive, but uh, if you can see behind me, a large crowd has started to gather. Is displaying the unofficial results from the race so far, uh, with uh, Levy showing uh, about a 50% lead uh, to Themis is about 40%. Uh, about more than uh, 10,000 votes cast so far. So the crowd definitely getting more excited here and hoping that this lead uh, obviously sticks throughout the rest of the night. Julia, we were just saying a few minutes ago, there's quite a crowd there at her campaign. Actually, when you see the, the turnout at a lot of these places where we've been going tonight, she seems to have uh, quite a show of support there with her tonight. Definitely, yeah. It's just, uh, the crowd has only gotten bigger as the night has gone on. People are continuing to filter in here. And uh, like I said, the highlight right now is obviously people are glued to the screen behind me where the results are coming in and uh, showing their candidate, um, Leo Levy, in the lead as of now uh, with polls closed just about uh, 40 minutes ago now. All right, Julia Bergman of Hearst uh, Leora Levy's headquarters. We appreciate you being with us. Uh, it seems to me we're in, in such a turmoil in this country with a lot. There's a lot. There's a lot going on. Is the easiest way to say it. And there are a lot of things that <laughs> voters care about. You can talk about the economy. You can talk about reproductive rights. Um, you can talk about a number of different issues that are border security, uh, voting rights. What do you think voters in that U.S. Senate race are really focused on? Is it gun legislation after what happened in Uvalde? I mean, there has been just so much that has happened, not to mention the entire pandemic. Right. Well, I think after Roe versus Wade and when that was overturned, I think that seemed to be the big uh, newsmaker. But I think more people care about the economy. I mean, let's face it, gas prices were very high. People were concerned about that. Seems to have gotten a little bit better. But people are uh, more concerned, I think, about their wallets and their economy and jobs. Uh, than they are necessarily, I'm not saying that pro-choice or, you know, uh, thing necessarily, but I do believe people are concerned about the economy. That's uh, and price, uh, cost of living. Uh, tomorrow it all morning, comes down to what folks have in their, you know, yes, to right, live right. and tomorrow, to survive. To people, people always Connecticut has a, a, and I'm not saying things are great, but Connecticut has probably in the last 
six or eight months outperform the nation, which is a rarity, a real rarity in the in the time I've been covering the state's economy. And when you look at gas prices, yeah, they're and back, I, first time under four dollars. Right, now, they've right? gone down, but you know, uh, previous administrations, the Biden administration has not been a big proponent of expanding oil production and pipelines. That's something I think Leora Levy has talked about in her campaign. It's a Republican mantra. They want to see us become more independent, but that also comes with uh, some risks as well. There's a little bit of not true that the Biden administration cut off the spigot. That's just a little. They did impose some regulations. They also left the, the, the industry cut off production because prices were so low at $2 a gallon, $2.50 a gallon. When he took over, it was still in the below $3 when he became president. To produce right, and just product because, and just because you want checks and balances right. doesn't mean you're anti-business right. either. Right. Uh, Tomorrow morning, we're going to see the uh, CPI, Consumer Price Index, the most not the most accurate, but the most commonly cited measure of inflation. And some people think it's going to go down from the 9.1, which was alarming. Will that help Republicans? I mean, Democrats, maybe, it, if it's sustained. If another, if it happens again in August and September, then, you know, that was what was discussed today on a number of, of uh, places. Where have we reached peak inflation? So that would be good for Democrats. A lot to play out over the next couple of months, that's for sure. I know that uh, the House Minority Leader issued a statement today after the Trump raid, uh, the, the, the FBI showing up at his home in Mar-a-Lago last night, saying that when they take over the House again, they're going to invest. We're never going to see the end, because we, <laughs> once, once we've learned how much fun it is to be completely separated and to get nothing done, then we just kind of keep. And these primaries with closed, no independent or doesn't help matters because it is possible I get that we're looking at only uh, 12 now thousand votes in with uh, uh, Leo Levy is still in the lead mm -hmm. and I get that we're gonna see an evening out in the big race there but uh, as they say it gets late early in a in a in a light primary yeah so, when you're watching these numbers so we may in. well see something that the Republicans broadly the people the Republicans in you know positions, town chairs and so forth, would like to see them as clarities. They may not get it. And uh, one of the things I kept hearing on the campaign trail covering these races is that Democrats secretly want Leora Levy to win because then she has a better uh, shot of being defeated by Dick Blumenthal. So well, I'm not sure if that's really true or not. Yeah. I don't know if they really got people to the polls to, to you know, to work that way in an opposite direction, mm -hmm. but, uh, but maybe. A sneak preview at what I'm going to write for tomorrow oh, is, the, is to Ooh. the point to the point that you just said uh, the they, that they'd rather see Themis. If Themis Claris wins, right, and it's by it's no means a tighter race, it's well, that's by no means guaranteed. But if she if she does win, she wakes up tomorrow morning battered by the party that she is in and broke. Absolutely. And Dick Blumenthal wakes up tomorrow morning. He's on the air with ads. You pointed yeah. that out, right? Yeah. You guys, we were you guys tonight. Right. Yeah. All day today, we were seeing ads for <laughs> yeah, Richard yeah. Blumenthal, which I found interesting, given that clearly he's not on the ballot for well, this he's primary a, he's, night. He's, he's, he's smart, and he has advice that says, you know, plant the seed. He's got $8 million. And you can say that Dick Blumenthal's popularity, his favorability ratings down to what was it, 41, not so high for a two term. 76. He's going to be almost 83 if he finishes. When he finishes this term, if he wins, he's going to be. Uh, he has no real signature issue that he can point to. Yes, the um, red flag law negotiated. I get it, but there were a lot of people involved in that, and so he may have some weaknesses that he hasn't had in the past. But nonetheless, eight million dollars and a dis. Shoveled name recognition. Yeah, that's true. 100%. All right, we want to switch gears name. here. We're 100%. going to switch gears to two other races that we've been closely following all day. We want to go to Eliza Krasinski. She is at Trinity Bar in New Haven. That's where Secretary of the State candidate Stephanie Thomas is, and also State. So, what's the latest there? Hey guys, good evening. So they have not arrived yet. We're still waiting for those numbers to come in for Stephanie and Thomas. But I mean, it is filling up pretty quick here. I mean, the crowd is, you know, lighting up, waiting, looking anxiously at these numbers. Actually, I have a live look right now. Stephanie is up 77%. Uh, she has about 
13,000 votes out of 17. And then let's go down to Eric Russell, who is at 57% for that treasurer's race. Now, both are the candidates who are endorsed by the state. Stephanie, of course, is running for the uh, secretary of the state. And uh, Eric Russell is running for the uh, treasurer. So we'll see. We're thinking that they're on their way soon, hopefully. I'll let you guys know, uh, but for now, back to you guys in the studio. All right, Eliza, thank you. One thing I do want to mention about Eric Russell, um, I'm certainly not an expert, but I really liked his ad, mm -hmm. the one in the supermarket where yes. he was uh, a it little boy. It was impactful. Yeah, I thought that was interesting because he's a young guy. And Dan, talk to me a little bit about his history. Uh, he's, this obviously is his first time running for a big office like this, right? Grew up in New Haven. The uh, son of not poor, poor like you know, deep in poverty, but uh, struggling, working, owning. They owned a uh, con went to college. Is now a partner at age 33, I believe, in a pretty big law firm in Connecticut. Yeah. He's doing bond counsel work, which is why he's running for this office. He's qualified for that because of that. Um, first, uh, everything's a first for something. Yeah, uh, he is. He, he is. Uh, I think. Um, arguably the first uh, gay of color candidate on perhaps or would be. I don't know that for sure. Um, I place a little bit less emphasis on identity politics than some people. We right, have to Dan, pause yeah. for a second. We're going to go Levy. right now. Yeah, Leora Levy is speaking at her campaign headquarters. Let's listen in live. Oh, well. And it was very brief, yes. obviously, because <laughs> it, she walked up there and probably said a quick hello, and then that was it for right now. Yeah, not much to say. We're going to go back to Dylan Fearon right now. He's at the Middletown headquarters of Themis Claritus and is joined tonight by Vinny Candelora. Dylan. Yes, Erin, we do know Themis Claritus got here about half an hour ago. She went into a private room. She's been in there about 20 25 minutes. She was the House Minority Leader for six years. We are joined by Vinnie Candelore, Representative, who is the current House Minority Leader. Representative, thanks for joining us tonight. Absolutely. Good. I'm wondering, low turnout today. What do you what do you make of it? What yeah, do you think? It was a remarkably quiet to have primaries. Certainly, people focusing on school, getting back to school, and and uh, so overall, I think it was a surprisingly low turnout, given the you know sort of the uh, emotions that were in this campaign. Does that help or hurt them as Claritus, help or hurt Leora Levy? We know Leora Levy got the Trump endorsement on Thursday, but Themis has had the party endorsement for a little bit now. Uh, what do you make of it? Does low turnout help or hurt these candidates? Yeah, I mean, I think generally low turnout hurts the endorsed candidate because um, the people that are coming out are motivated sort of for the underdog typically. So um, we all had some concern when we saw the numbers were just not coming in very high. Any other reasons uh, to explain the low turnout besides the fact that it's just hot out? I mean, maybe it's summertime, people on vacation, or maybe people just not energized right now? What, what, I mean, but you think they would be, given everything that's gone on, and, and they care about the economy and, and other things, you think they would want to come out and vote? Yeah, I think one of the things, people certainly are, are really concerned about what's going on on a national level and the affordability, certainly, of Connecticut. And the focus really is toward the general election. So there just doesn't seem to be a lot of focus on the primary, even though we saw those commercials running over and over again, people don't realize that you need to get out and vote on August uh, 9th. What do you make of this race? It seems the last few weeks it's gotten contentious. Um, both Leora Levy and Themis Claritus attacking each other with ads. Uh, we know when the Trump endorsement came in, Leora Levy put it on speakerphone, and we know Themis was in the audience for that. What do you make of the race? Is, is been in an elected office for 22 years. I've served with her, and she's done a great job, you know, serving her district. She was the first House uh, uh, woman leader pass a minority budget in the country where we saw no tax increases so from a feed uh, in Washington DC so it's why I certainly supported her what do you make of the fact that it has been a contentious race over the last few weeks yeah I think it's disappointing the the sort of mudslinging that you see especially the way it plays out on social media um, I think that decorum is a lot better when you go to the polls um, and when you talk to people one-on-one -on -one. Um, but social media certainly gets real ugly and we saw a lot of contentiousness over it and people have their differences of position but there should be a uh, primary cycle Okay, Representative, thank you very much. We hope to see Themis Claritus in the next few minutes, perhaps. We'll see when she comes out. She's been in a private room for about 25 to 30 minutes with some friends and family. Representative, thank you. Let's send it back to Mark, Aaron, Dan, and Susan. All right, Dylan, thank you very much for that. Very interesting to hear from him.
And I know you had some thoughts. Well, I just want to pick up what, off of what, uh, pick up what, just what, said. what Representative Candelora has, and he, this has been a big sticking point of his for some number of years. He would like to see a more civil discourse. And I think a lot of people would like to see it, but he's made it an issue. And I think the Republican Party as a whole needs to decide on the two scales that I, we were talking about before. One is flamethrower versus civil, and the other is far to the right versus moderate. And there are four quadrants there. And the Republican Party has a better chance of winning with someone who's civil and moderate and less with someone who's a flamethrower far to the right. Unfortunately, those people win primaries in that quadrant. And one of the biggest accomplishments, I think, from both sides uh, is that infamous bipartisan budget where they basically left Governor Malloy out of the process they and did it themselves. They locked him out. They locked him out. You're not invited. You can't come in. Uh, but that's very important. And I think that shows that Connecticut politics is a little bit different from many parts yeah. of the country. You have moderate Republicans here. You have factions. You have the conservative caucus. But that's one example where they got a very good uh, budget. And even in the end, uh, you know, it, that I think Republicans support many things that Democrats and vice versa. Not all the time. Uh, but I think he's right about that. I want to mention Leora Levy, apparently, in her very brief address, just thanked everybody for coming and said she wants to wait for more numbers to come in before she has anything else to say. So that's why that happened so quickly by the time we got to her. Thank you for the done. update, Mark. We needed that. A bit of breaking news to pass along. It was right very there. quick. What I do want to point out, too, is you're looking at the bottom of your screen here on WFSB Plus, or if you're watching on the Channel 3 app, you are seeing those early numbers coming in just 54 minutes since polls closed. But, Dan, you mentioned something while uh, Dylan was speaking with Vinnie Candelora, is that some of these numbers we're seeing mean more right. than others. Why is that? Because if there's... In an early difference of, say, 20 points, as we see now between parties, will give more support to Themis, just as we see with Democrats and Republicans in a general election. So we may think that that's going to tighten up. When you look at the treasurer race, Eric Russell at 57.4 percent right now, and Dieter Bargava with 24 uh, percent of the of the turnout. That's time to worry for her. That's time to worry because she already. She's, there's no reason to believe that her votes will be different from his demographically or in respect to ideology. In terms of the Secretary of the State, Stephanie Thomas and Maritza Bond, Stephanie Thomas well in the lead at this point. Given the fact that they have similar platforms, wouldn't that be a good boost for Thomas? Yeah, that's exactly right. That's right. I think so. Yes. One of the things, you, you refreshed my memory a little bit, and I remember at the very beginning uh, of uh, the Republican gener uh, Energize, Leora Levy was in New Britain. Do you remember that? Did you go to They're looking for outreach because they want to be able to make some inroads in some of the inner cities. She opened a store. That's correct. Uh, and it was the only one in Connecticut in New Britain because when the elections come, Democrats team t uh, tend to do much better in the larger cities and Republicans are making some, are trying to make some inroads. I'm not sure uh, if that's working and how far they've gotten in that. I'm curious about something and, and I don't know if this is a foolish question, but I know she was nominated to be an ambassador. What happened with that? Senate didn't vote and Trump didn't use any political uh, capital to get a vote. Okay, so he didn't think in his last year of office that it was right, important. Just didn't enough. get taken up. She didn't right. He it. now had it been important enough to him, he would have applied some muscle uh, and gotten that vote. Made it happen, yeah. Right, right, which is so bizarre because she will say that she's the outsider, but clearly, I mean, she ran, I think she did the finances for Bob Stefanowski's campaign. Uh, she worked for the State Department. She's very much, she knows a lot of people in Washington. She's raised a lot of money for them. So she is very much, I think, the Washington insider. Yes, you know, yes. Go yeah, ahead. I was just going to say a lot of people right now at Leora Levy's uh, headquarters out to Julia Bergman, a reporter for Hearst Connecticut Media. Julia, we did hear, we saw Leora Levy on the stage when we got to her. What did she actually say while she was up speaking to the crowd there? So a uh, cautiously optimistic uh, Leora Levy just walked into the room about 10 minutes ago. She said she uh, was feeling good but wanted to await the results. It's still early. Uh, she referenced Greenwich being her hometown, you know, where we are here tonight. Uh, uh, but told everyone to relax, have a glass of uh, Certainly feeling good but, uh, you know, not ready to, to uh, say much more than that at this point. Obviously a pretty big crowd there behind you. What are the rumblings you've been hearing from folks there? Is there a nervous energy? Are they feeling confident? What's the mood like? 
Uh, there's, you know, there's, they're saying post watch on the unofficial results page here displayed behind around a bit, but still showing uh, Lior with a pretty comfortable lead right now. They're feeling pretty confident about that, uh, hoping that it sticks, of course, but I think, you know, uh, some of that nervous energy is maybe going away here, and uh, people are feeling a little bit more confident in the room. Julia, covering this, I'm curious, after the Trump endorsement and the phone call and all that, was this and just the way people were with the campaign and, and how they felt about all of it over the past, you know, day or so? Uh, they've certainly been doing an endorsement by the former president, you know, both on social media and I know a number of people who got a text message blast from her campaign uh, earlier today and throughout the day, uh, alerting them to that endorsement. Uh, as far as people in the room, they think it's probably going to help her in a primary, but it's still really an open question whether, uh, if she wins tonight, whether a Trump endorsement will help her going forward in November. Quarters of Leora Levy as we await returns. 58 minutes. We're approaching 9 o'clock on a Tuesday night, primary night. If you are just joining us, we appreciate you being with us. Joined by Susan Raff and Dan Haar, First Connecticut Media. And we're on, of course, WFSB Plus right now in the Channel 3 app. We're going to stay with you for a few more minutes right now mm -hmm. as we uh, continue our coverage right here. We have updated numbers coming in at the bottom of the screen throughout the entire time. Uh, updating in real time. It's fascinating to actually see because uh, uh, the Eric Russell race, for I say that, I mean, he's clearly in the lead. He's got more than the other two combined at this points. So um, that's just one race we're following right now, that for treasurer here in Connecticut, but obviously Secretary of the State, uh, the two Senate races, a lot of a lot of new developments. And some felt, oh, here we go with some results. Yeah, these are just coming in right now. Numbers um, are starting to add up there. When you look at those numbers at, at, at 21,000, just doing it quickly there, a, a, a critical mass there. And it's starting to be time for for Themis and her supporters to worry. Do you agree with some that felt that Themis did not spend enough money on her campaign? She didn't have enough money. Okay. I mean, that's the she 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 wasn't able to raise money as efficiently as she had hoped because Leora Levy, the fundraiser, was you know sucking Very a lot of air. As a case in point, let's talk about one contributor to Leora Levy. Well, one fellow from Madison by the name of Stefanowski. Mm, I was just right? going to ask. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> he maxes out at 5,800. Why? Because he loves her and he wants her to be the... No. He maxes out. Most likely, it's a matter of public record that she supported his candidacy That's with right. contributions as early as 2017 when he started and was unknown and had not voted in 20 years and all that stuff. She was behind him. So this is part of keeping people from, not necessarily strong arming, but keeping people from contributing to Themis in that primary. But it's also a situation where some people have a lot of money, more than Themis, more than others, and they're just in some way well, shuffling, shuffling money around in different ways, different candidates. Well, the sad reality is that, especially in, in the federal elections where they don't have an option for public financing in the state, for the governor, for example, you can get seven million, I think it's one million for the primary, or, but it's, you get a total of eight or nine million Right, we haven't seen that in a while, and we're not going to see it. Although Governor Malloy did it and won, so it is not impossible, especially with outside individual expend or in independent expenditures. Yeah. But it's harder and harder, and that's why you're seeing these multi-millionaires run for governor. Yeah, right. Sure. You, uh, Dick Blumenthal's what is the wealthiest uh, member of Congress by marriage. <laughs> you had to have some developments at Trinity Bar. That is where Secretary of the State candidate Stephanie Thomas and State Treasurer candidate Eric Russell are tonight. It is also where our very own Eliza Krasinski is amongst a lot of people behind you. What's the latest there, Eliza? Hey, yeah. Hey guys, yeah, good evening. Well, Stephanie is on her way now because Maritza Bond actually did just concede this race. So Stephanie is on her way to talk at the podium. We're still waiting on the numbers from the state treasurer, but again, Maritza Bond conceded, so we are here. I mean, everyone's really gathering. There was a big cheer, just a few, it was literally, you know, two minutes ago where they announced that. So uh, she's on her way and we'll get that for you guys in a bit, but back to you for now.